batteries in many household appliances we use batteries nowadays but what about them what is a battery well a battery is used to, is, is uh, functions by converting chemical energy into electrical energy and the chemical energy is stored into two metals in two metals well here you see a schematic drawing a battery and uh, well, actually if you want to really know how it works we should slice it through look at the cross section like this and inside we see a metal pin and that's what we call metal number one and on the outside the outside the outside bus that's called metal number two and in between them there's another stuff that's called an electrolyte and we'll tell you what that is in just a few seconds well metal two Metal number two, the outside bus, must attract electrons more strongly than metal one. That's how we make batteries. Well, this kind of batteries, at least. Um, and then, if that is the case, if one metal attracts electrons much stronger, much stronger than the uh, the other one, or just a little bit stronger, doesn't matter. Uh, the two metals will uh, go, uh, will chemical react, uh, chemically react with each other, and the chemical reaction between the two. That creates an electrical vo uh, electrical voltage, um, and that means that metal number two, the outside, becomes the cathode and is therefore the negative side of the battery, and metal two one is the anode and becomes the positive side of the battery. And now, why is that electrolyte there in between? Well, that's to keep the chemical reaction under control and to stabilize it, because if you just clamp two metals, two, these two kinds of metals together, the reaction will be uncontrolled and very fast. And why do you think you want to use your battery a little bit longer than a few seconds? Now, there are just, uh, when does a battery run flat and how can we recharge batteries? Now, if you notice it, it's a chemical reaction between two metals, uh, but the metals are actually consumed. So you can run out of, a, of one of the metals. They just simply are finished. They used, you used all of it. And that's when we say a battery goes flat. It will produce no more energy. You've used up all the metal there is. Just no more of it. But watch out. There's a danger in that. That means because, as you have seen, metal number two is the outside bus of the battery itself. Just the outside of the battery. That means if it's run flat in the the metal number two is the first to, to run out there is no more outside of the battery and that means the battery can start leaking that can be dangerous because the electrolyte is possibly highly toxic very likely highly toxic and is also very corrosive on uh, any kind of metals around it including the apparatus that it is placed in so empty batteries do not leave them in the apparatus just remove it as quickly as possible it can damage us until it is uh, well, impossible to repair but now uh, some time ago uh, long after they were invented batteries themselves they found out that if you choose your metals appropriately and the correct, the correct electrolyte, you can actually reverse the reaction and regain the metal that you used. That's nice. And that can be done by using an ex external uh, voltage source, and that will force the current to run through the battery the wrong way. So electrons were going from metal one to number two, because number two was wanting the electrons more than the metal number one. But now you actually force the electrons to go back from metal two to metal one. And then you get your metals back. And if you get your metals back, like in a circuit like this, then you get your battery back and your battery can be used again and can use again start producing electrical energy from chemical energy so now, if that's possible you call the battery rechargeable don't try to re recharge batteries that are not rechargeable because very likely they say boom in your recharger uh, and that's not likely because then the electrolyte will be everywhere but if it's rechargeable yeah, well, put it in there and you have actually the same battery as a new battery. And you can 
usually do that up to a thousand times before uh, it becomes uh, you really run out of metal now just an overview of the most common types of metals we have the double a triple a battery uh, which is in non-rechargeable form is one and a half volts and 1.2 volts if it's rechargeable because of different metals different voltage then we have the uh, AA, also one and a half times uh, or 1.2, just a little bit bigger than the old one. And we have the C battery, and that is also uh, 1.5 volts and one and a half or 1.2 volts, just also again a bit larger, so you have more metal and more electrolytes, so you can use the battery longer. But it's also a bigger battery, heavier battery, so it must fit in your appliance. And we have an even bigger one, which is the D battery, and that runs on 1.5 volts and 1.2 volts. Okay, it's all 1.5 and 1.2. Uh, these are all actually the same metal and the same. Uh, this, both metals are the same and the same electrolyte. They're just more of it. We have the lantern batteries like this one, that's 4.5 volts, and you won't find them in a rechargeable form. Differs too much. And finally, we have the 9 volts battery, which, as the name already says, gives off 9 volts, but not a very rechargeable one, because then it's only 8.4. There are many, 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 many more shapes and sizes, and they're all giving different voltages, so uh, then always take a literature value. Look them up in a long list of types of batteries so that you put the right one in your appliance and not the wrong one because it can really damage what you're using it now there's one more thing we have to look at now it was very wrongly called the capacity of a battery uh, and it's mostly put on rechargeable batteries but sometimes also on just normal plain batteries uh, there's an indication of how long you can use that battery. And that is indicated uh, as capacity, but that's not really true. Because capacity, which, which is has a symbol, a capital C, is actually the property of a capacitor and not of a battery. A capacitor is something completely different. So, um, what then is it? Well, that capacity is indicated with an MAH, and that stands for milliamp hours. And one milliamp hour means you can use the battery on an, app, on an appliance that use one milliamp hour, and then the battery will last one hour. This example here, which a photo shown, it says 800 MAH, 800 milliamp hours, means you can use it in an apparatus that uh, wants 800 milliamp hours, and then you can use this battery for one hour. Or the other way around, if the uh, apparatus means one uh, milliamp, then you can use it for 800 hours. And if it's something that wants 400 milliamps, you can use it for two hours. And if it wants two milliamps, you can use it for 400 hours, just as long as current times time makes up 800. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Current times time, one milliamp hour, actually means one milliampere times one hour, but milliamps, amperes, that's the unit of measurement of current. And hour is the measurement of time. So actually it's a current times a time, but that equals a charge. So it's not capacity. It's not the amount of energy that is stored in the battery. It's the amount of charge that is stored in the battery. And then we still need one more calculation to calculate the amount of energy stored in the battery by also using the voltage. Because, of course, the voltage is the energy divided by the charge. But now we must rewrite that formula into energy is voltage times charge, and then you know how much energy is in a battery. And that's all we have to say for now about batteries.